Dog days of summer. We're far from that, yeah, though. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Speaking of dogs. Thanks, Brooks. Yeah, I knew this half hour. Dogs and babies. Of course, of course, both adorable. But you know what? You want your, your dog to love the new baby. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen like that. And there's help for someone who calls himself a doggy doula. Yeah, we have Tanya here. She is from Family Pop. She's going to tell us about how you guys help families maybe introduce that new baby into the family. Um, because not every dog is the same. Not every yeah. family is the same. And sometimes that can be a, a difficult transition maybe, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when we work with our expecting families, we go through a whole process. Process. We start with training the dog, making sure that the dog is able to respond to the parents in any situation, even when they're holding a baby. Yeah. Uh, then we prepare the dog by exposing them to the baby equipment, to baby sounds, different movements, making sure that we know how the dog reacts to those so that we are prepared. And if there are things that we need to change or teach the dog how to uh, behave in certain situations, we can do that as well. And then we we also make a plan for um, the date that the mom is giving birth right. and also the date that the parents bring home the baby and then the weeks and months after that to make sure that we create positive associations. Do you think a lot of us parents often forget how, how shocking all of this change can be for the dog? Because it is new, new, like you said, the baby gear. Dogs, they haven't seen that before. They don't know what a baby is. They don't know the concept of a baby necessarily. Do you think we forget how shocking that is for the dog? I think your parents tend to get very busy with yeah, the baby. That's true. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oftentimes the dog kind of takes the back seat. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we want to make sure that we are consciously making time, even if it's five, ten minutes, so each parent has that time with the dog and making sure that we keep the schedule as close as possible yeah. to yeah. what the dog is used to so that the dog feels that they're still a part of the family and feels uh, that they their life has not changed that much. And if not, they, there is uh, help out there. There are walkers, there are daycares. Yeah. that can be options for parents. Stuff. Yeah, totally. Well, and especially if the dog is used to getting all of your attention. Well, that's and a now change. they don't have all your attention. Or there's like a screaming child in the room now, yeah. and they're like, what is this noise? Is this a fire alarm? What's happening, right? Absolutely. Well, that's the thing. The attention thing is a big deal. because it's And just like with kids, if you have a, a one kid, then you go to having a second kid, all of a sudden the first kid's like, wait a second, dogs respond the same. <laughs> Same way, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that we talk about very often. Um, parents see the dog's change in behavior okay. as jealousy because it's easy for us to explain it, right? This is yeah. jealousy. This is what I see. But oftentimes I see this as sign of anxiety because now the dog is unsure how to behave. The routine has changed and the household has changed. So yeah. we want to make sure that um, we make it comfortable for the dog and prepare yeah. them as well. Well, and you guys have an event coming up on Wednesday, is that right? Yeah, so we have a, an event at Second Start to the Right. There we'll be talking about, um, it's more of a dogs and toddlers. So when kids are a little bit younger, obviously they, they crawl and they move around. So a lot more conflict can be seen in that um, right. year, in that age. Uh, so we want to make sure that we incorporate management around the house, like uh, uh, baby gates, uh, crates and baby gates, and different ways to uh, provide, let's say, a child-free space for the dog and vice versa. Um, talk about dog body language, which is very important. There are some um, subtle signals that not everybody recognizes, but once we do, then we can ensure that when the dog is not comfortable, we can redirect um, the situation and intervene. All right, Perfect. familypups.com with a Z on the end. You can uh, find out more information about the event on Wednesday and, of course, everything that you guys do. Thank you so much. Thank you v so very much. Very good information, especially for, <laughs> for pe pet pups, yes. pet parents-to-be is what oh I was trying goodness. to say, or, or parents-to-be for that matter. <laughs> there are a ton of highlights from the NBA All-Star.